All right, good afternoon. Um, thanks for all uh, being here. Um, I'm Maurits, and uh, the last couple of months I worked on uh, this project, and it's creating a recommendation system to build the best teams ever for part of. But uh, because uh, before I will dive into the more uh, technical stuff, I first want to explain you uh, what is part of and why do we need a recommendation system. So uh, what you see here is actually an office about a hundred years ago. Super classic, no communication, all those little islands. And let's be honest, how many of your offices still look like this? And that's actually not needed anymore because nowadays, um, because of economic reasons, but also because of personal reasons, we want to have flat organizations, not that hierarchies anymore. We want to be flexible, we want to move fast because the competition is not only our neighbor anymore, but also a big company from Africa or China or somewhere else in the world. Um, that also means that we're not gonna do all the tasks anymore, but we're gonna specify on one task and we're gonna do that really good. But that means that you have to cooperate with other organizations too. And your workers, I think this group really knows it well, we don't want to go to the office at nine o'clock sharp. Maybe we want to work from home. Um, we want to work uh, also when we're on holiday and lying on the beach with a cocktail. So you see that the economy and organizations are changing and then you actually need a platform to support that. And um, that platform, that is part of. Because if you imagine that uh, you don't have a fixed function anymore, a fixed department, but you can do whatever you want from wherever you want, then you need a platform where you can, on a marketplace, find that team and form that team. Now, this is actually a part of, part of is founded uh, one and a half years ago. The platform is launched in August. And you see here some public teams that everybody uh, can join. And you uh, start by, for example, supporting it, but then uh, you can also contribute to an activity and then you become really a partner in it. Uh, you should compare the, the business model a bit like uh, GitHub. Everybody can start uh, public teams, but if you want to have a private uh, team for your own organization, then you have to pay a small fee. And one step further, you then see uh, this. So this is when I'm in a team. Actually, this is how we run our data squad within uh, Partup. And uh, we have some activities. And uh, my colleague Joost joined an activity. And uh, here you can cooperate and uh, organize yourself. But there's no team leader. Uh, everybody's equal. When you become a partner, you really are running the team uh, together. But what you have seen in the previous picture, I can already start over 400 teams. So what should I pick? Because Netflix uh, uh, analyzed that if you have a lot of teams uh, or a lot of options, uh, then you probably check 10 to 20 movie titles, only three in detail, detail. And if there's not that movie title that you want, that you like, then you drop out and then you never come back. So I don't want to serve you 450 teams. I actually want to serve you just one team that fits perfectly your interests, your ambitions, and your mood at that moment. Um, so that's why we started developing a recommendation engine. This is uh, the structure we have right now. Uh, our website runs on Meteor, uh, that's awesome, that works together with uh, MongoDB. And uh, actually we chose to use a hybrid data structure, database structure. Um, so MongoDB has all the stuff for the website, but no recommendations, because what you all know, Neo4j is really rocking at those query paths walking. It's way faster than MongoDB. So that the recommendations are calculated and stored in there. And um, when I ask a recommendation via uh, the API, uh, that then actually uses JCypher. Don't know if you guys know that too. Wolfgang will give a presentation in this room later on. It's really uh, good to um, request and work with, uh, with Neo4j. Um, then you get that ID back and that picture is then colored in with the uh, information from MongoDB. Um, to create those recommendations, we no use Graphware. And Graphware, you all wear uh, uh, with your badges and they have a nice recommendation uh, framework where you can specify really the algorithms that you want so you can easily customize it. 
but you don't have to put time and uh, efforts in all the stuff like building the whole uh, framework. So uh, if you don't know it yet, uh, go walk upstairs to them later on and ask them some questions and they can uh, show you around. They've been really supportive uh, for me in the last couple of months and uh, I really like uh, their product. The Java importer is just to kick off with the old data uh, that we uh, put in uh, Neo4j uh, straight away. All right, um, this is then the logical data model that we use in uh, Neo. It's actually this simple. Uh, I dropped all the properties, uh, of course, but we um, have a user and a user can hold strengths. That's like a, a, pro a profile thing. Um, a user is, of course, active in a team and a user and a team can be part of a network and a an user, a network and a an, uh, team are, of course, located in a city and a city is located in a country. And uh, in Neo4j, it looks like this. So uh, this is me and uh, for privacy reasons and the overview, I dropped uh, other users, but you can see I'm quite active in a lot of teams and those are uh, again connected to those yellow networks. And uh, this is the, the, the whole uh, structure that we have. And when you see this structure, you know, and of course with your background, you know that it's really easy already to walk those paths um, in uh, Neo4j to get maybe recommendations for uh, teams that I don't know yet. Um, and that is why we use uh, Graphware. Um, Graphware is a bit organized, organized like this. And um, you see here the different modules that I uh, put into. Um, I don't want to explain them all in detail. If you have questions um, later on, actually the slides uh, will be shared. They're already on my Twitter and there's a link on the, the last page. Um, but you can see we uh, use some algorithms in the recommendation engine. Then um, we check uh, with the blacklist uh, if there are already uh, teams on those recommendations that you're already active in. We don't want that. Uh, we post-produce them, so we tweak the results a little bit um, with in the post-processor. Um, the config, config is uh, what you see, just the max, and you have some lockers for me to uh, understand it and check it. This is uh, the blacklist. That is um, uh, pretty easy. And um, these are uh, some of the filters uh, that I use. I wanted to add those cipher queries, but because of time reasons and we have more complex stuff coming up, I won't explain them in detail, but please check them out uh, online. Then we go uh, into designing those algorithms because that is what it's all about. Um, what uh, should you pay attention to? First, you can have data sparsity. So you don't know a lot about your user, you don't know a lot about uh, the team you want to recommend. Um, that's especially a big problem in the beginning with the cold start. Uh, that is why dating sites, for example, give you that questionnaire at the beginning. Second, gray sheep. That's maybe when a user is active on a platform, but it's completely not comparable with anybody else, but you still want to have recommendations for him. It, of course, should be scalable, not only your infrastructure, but also your algorithms. Uh, then we have the shilling attacks. You don't want that by the uh, false activity of other users that your algorithm is moving in their direction compared to people who on Amazon place falsified ratings to make their um, fraudulent product interesting for other users. And on the end, uh, it's uh, synonymy. Uh, and that is just something simple as we understand that coding and programming is exactly the same, but a computer, it doesn't. Then um, if we look at uh, how did these algorithms uh, came up, uh, in Palo Alto, in Xerox Park, they were already busy with it for years, ages ago, and um, they uh, had some small steps, but it didn't really work because you still get all the mess on your desk, almost literally. And then they thought, okay, what if we would compare my activity in documents to other people, and then you get some profile, and then we can maybe also have a prediction of the stuff that I like, that is similar to what another user likes, and then we can make recommendations on the documents that another user is reading. So that uh, fourth one, collaborative filtering, that is what I uh, used. And um, first to get up to speed, a really uh, simple 
uh, exp uh, example. Um, I have a user on the left that is active in three teams, and in those three teams are three other users active, and those are again then active in four teams. So um, if we would start walking those paths, we have first uh, this path to team number three, and then we can continue on with another path. You can imagine if we do this 12 times, you get some kind of ranking. This is a really, really basic form of uh, recommendation. But based on this, I could say that this team is uh, the most interesting to suggest to um, my user. And this is, I think, without, you know, uh, you don't use any properties here. So it's really easy to implement or uh, to write because in Cypher queries, it, uh, it looks like this. Um, so if a user that's active in a team, um, I check uh, that ID. That ID is actually in parameters because um, that's really because it's used in um, Graphware. So Graphware uh, supports uh, me in that and automates that process and keeps on running um, this query. And then you see uh, I used a little bit of a score um, on those paths. And uh, in the end, this result is then stored back by Graphware um, in uh, Neo4j. So it's, it could be tweaked based on uh, those post-processing stuff that I mentioned. So maybe you have shared tags or uh, you have uh, some uh, shared city uh, or maybe in the end um, some other uh, similarities uh, that you could do. Or you say maybe a team is already too big. I don't want to advise it because it makes no sense or it is already uh, finished. Uh, Graphware all uh, does that on those based, uh, based on those different uh, cipher queries and uh, then uh, stores it back. But there's a bit of a problem. Uh, this is an, uh, another one uh, where I didn't use teams but where I used uh, networks at, uh, as the combining factors by ending up um, recommending uh, teams still uh, in the end. But there's a problem because what you see uh, for that first query, I had to walk already 12 paths every time that I want to do a recommendation for a user. That's heavy. Amazon actually discovered already that it was pretty heavy in 1998. And uh, they decided to come up with some smarter uh, algorithm. And um, they found one, they patented it, uh, but it's a pity for them. Uh, it was not accepted in Europe. And they're appealing it, uh, but um, the patent uh, will be patent-free in, in 2018. So I'm sure you can all use it, and uh, probably there will be no problem at all. Actually, um, Netflix is also uh, is using it. So what we have right here, it's a little bit more complex. Um, I came up with a rating of a user on a team. And for Netflix, that could be that star rating of one to five stars. But I don't want to bug my users every day with asking them, how do you feel about this team? So based on their comments, their contributions, the number of page views, I came up with a rating between one and five. So that is what you see here. A user has a rating from 4.5 or 2.3, and other users also have a rating on that team. And now I'm curious if I can predict how much this user will like that team. Will we rate it a one or will we rate it a five? But there's no activity yet. Um, so what do I do? I use the uh, adjust cosine similarity. And uh, you do that by saying, okay, we're gonna compare uh, the ratings that users have on two teams. So uh, in this case, that's really important. So what is the difference between 3.7 and 2.6 on, on these teams? But um, we are also going to include this one because I want to normalize a team. Sometimes you can probably have that a user is not really enthusiastic about anything at all. So he's always rating low. So you have to normalize uh, the scores with the average score of all users on a team. So that is why I'm using it. And then um, if you use this uh, formula, then you can calculate a similarity between zero and one. So and now I know that these teams are pretty similar. I do that again. 
these are uh, less similar. And if I then combine all this information, so what I do, I use the weighted sum, I use the similarity between those teams, I use what my user is actually uh, rating uh, on a team, and then I give a pretty good prediction of what his participation score would be. Here I say, based on this information and some other information that I don't show, it's a 3.6. If you do that for all teams in the database, you can advise the top 10 scores to, uh, the, you can advise the top 10 teams with the highest scores. So, uh, and what you also see right here, to make those recommendations, I don't need this right side anymore. So it's really that model-based approach where you first create the model with the similarities, and then you have an online approach where you use that model and try to predict very rapidly those recommendations. And this is how you create the similarity uh, based on uh, the new stuff that um, Mark and Michael showed with a Neo4j um, a tree and um, the, the procedures. I think I can uh, even adjust it a little bit and make it a little bit better, but currently uh, I do it like this. And this in the end will calculate those similarities. And of course you from time to time have to update those similarities if their behavior uh, changes. And then uh, I use this at a, as a weighted sum uh, uh, formula to create that uh, rating of what I just showed, 3.6. Uh, some feedbacks, because I um, ask my users, okay, if I give you these recommendations, do you like it? Now, luckily, uh, they loved it. Actually, uh, to be honest, sometimes they loved it too much because also the rep random recommendations thought that was a perfect fit with their profile. So you should take that in mind. Always show the context. If you put stuff with, this is a recommendation, users will start trusting you a little bit more already. But there was also a pity um, that formula, that rating that I came up with based on those comments and page views, it didn't work out. So we're exploring that more and we're gonna invest some more time in that in really creating a perfect uh, score that we can uh, create those implicit uh, ratings. Then um, I'm closing into the end. Uh, we um, don't only believe in transparency, we also do it. So uh, actually our whole website, our whole me Meteor website is online. Um, the API is online, my importer tool is online. If we are uh, confident about our recommendation engine, we will share it, uh, we will share it too. And we also ask you, um, contribute. Think along with us uh, for just a question of one second or for a project that you want to do remotely uh, for in the long run, or even want to earn some money as a freelancer. To conclude, I think filtering is really needed. You don't want to serve 450 teams, you want to serve one team, people expect it. We also have Google nowadays, so you have to invest in that. Uh, it has to be domain independent, so that is really where you say, okay, we're gonna look at a smart, smart way that is uh, comparing other users instead of just looking at tags. Um, it should be easy, customizable. Uh, Graphware and Neo4j and all the other open source tools really gives you the opportunity to make your own recommendation uh, system out of it. It should be scalable, what I said, the infrastructure, but also uh, the algorithms. And last but not least, make sure uh, that you also make it hybrid. So MongoDB next to Neo4j, but also multiple algorithms next to each other that make sure that for every type of user that you have in your database, you can serve those recommendations. And um, then I can only conclude with saying, guys, visit partner.com. It's a great website and it's a marketplace that can, will definitely change the way you work. Make a free account, uh, participate. My slides are over here. If you have questions, uh, just like the other speakers, I will be upstairs at three o'clock or you can send me a tweet uh, or an email. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to discussing with you.